In this episode of the Back Engineering Show, I'd like to talk about UDP hole punching. Why does it exist? What problems does it solve? Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Back Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasser. And to talk about UDP hole punching, we need to address the original problem that led to this tech, if you will. You see, the problem was that two machines wanted to uh, establish UDP sessions between each other. And that wasn't really a problem in the early 90s because uh, when, when each one of the homes had one machine and that is connected directly to either DSL or dial-up and the machine had a public IP address immediately, you know, it, it's directly had a public IP address, right? There is no private addressing per se, that such as what we have today was like 192.168.1.3 and my phone has 10.0.0.3 and my other laptop has 10.0.0.4. There is none of that because like computing was very limited. And so each machine had a public presence in the internet. So if I want to have two computers talk to each other directly to build, let's say, a game, you know, using UDP protocol, where I can send certain commands through a UDP datagram, right? I can put the public IP address of the other machine I want to talk to, granted that I need to know the public IP address, which is not hard. And then I put this, the destination port where the application is running on the destination remote source, the remote server. And then I put my source port, which is some port that I decide to where I can accept communication back if the server decides to reply back. And there's no concept of server or client per se, because this is kind of a client to client communication, if you want, right? They want to directly communicate to each other. So there's no problem, right? Because the packet will go to the public IP address. It will traverse the internet. The routers in the internet will route the UDP packet. Well, they route the IP packet underneath it because they don't really care if it's this is UDP or TCP per se. And they will just, just travel until it reaches the destination machine. And then once it reaches that, the OS will take care of that IP packet, crack it open, find that as a UDP, find the destination port where the process is running, and then deliver the UDP datagram to the destination process. That's, that's how it works. And it's very simple. And if we were to reply back, easy. In the UDP packet, there was the source port and there was a source IP. We just reply back to those pieces of information, craft a new UDP datagram and send them back. And all and behold, we have a bi-directional UDP channel that we fictitiously created in order to create this unique protocol to build a game or real-time chatting or anything. Beautiful, right? That's essentially like how web rtc in the modern era works through udp you know so what's the problem now well the problem is in this day and age we almost never have a public ip address uh we're connected to a wi-fi right? in home and we have dozens of machines right and all these machines they don't have public presence they have private IP addresses. And we created this to uh, limit the IPv4 scarcity, if you will. Okay. So now each machine, all of these tens of machines will be assigned a private network. And this could be a specific subnet, let's say 10 0 0 0 1. That's a lot of zeros. And then uh, the router will use DHCP and assign these unique addresses that are private. They are not publicly addressable. No packet will ever go to the internet with this private IP address. It doesn't make any sense because it's not routable on the internet because it's private. So what do we do? Right? So what if, if this is a private IP address, how do I talk to Google? Or how do I talk to a service? Or how do I do a DNS? How do I do that? Well, you, you send your packet normally, right? And because the router is the gateway, the 
IP packet or your UDP packet or your TCP segment will pass through the router. And the router will say, wait a minute, your source port is cool and all, but your source IP is private. I can't let you go naked like that in the internet. I need to change your source IP so I can present you in the public world, you know, dangerous internet. I'm your public IP address. Granted, your uh, router in this case has a public presence and that public IP address is assigned by your ISP. Now, granted that some ISPs uh, for their customers create another isolated uh, network to save on money so that they assign one, instead of assigning, like let's say the ISP has a thousand customers, they put all these thousand customers on a single IP address, you know, and they create those public, uh, the routers as its own another private network that the ISP manages. It is what it is, right? So let's assume there is a public presence. Now the router will change the IP address to its own public IP address. And then it will also change the source port and it creates a new port. And then because we change something, we need to store the fact that we changed it. So a mapping is created between the source Port, the original source port and the original private IP address and the new source port and the new IP public IP address which is the routers and a record is created in a table that is called network address translation table or NAT and then the packet goes off goes to any machine any server on the internet the, the server will reply back to what not the private IP address, it will reply back to the router and whatever port is there. And the router in this case will receive that packet and will look at the NAT table and says, oh, wait a minute, I received the, uh, yes, this, uh, this is intended to me as a public IP address, this is intended to me as this is the destination port, but it's, it's I know as a router, nothing is sent to me that is ever actually to me, address to me as a router. It's someone behind me. So we'll look up this table and we'll say, okay. Uh, it's kind of sad in a way, if you think about it, that the router receives millions of packets, but none of these are for the router. It's actually just routing. Kind of sad in a way, you know? <laughs> but the router will take that and does a job and then will remap that packet back to a to the its original destination and that's how nat works so what happens if i want to do the same thing that we originally talked about client to client communication but both of my clients are private addresses they are behind routers they are behind nat well this machine and this machine can try to talk to each other out of bounds, but they can't really, right? Because if you send a packet, even if you know, well, well first of all, you, all, you need to know the public IP address of that router, right? Because you never know the private IP address of that guy. It doesn't make any sense. So even if you send something, the router will look at it and says, okay, you want to go to this uh, public IP address, which is me, and you want to go to a certain port, but I have nothing for you here. Wh what are you going? There is nothing on my NAT that tells me to route this to this. And that's the problem. So the router just drops everything right there. The, there is a wall that the router pulls and, and kind of a firewall if you will you cannot just send packets to anyone right in this private uh, uh, network unless an entry in the NAT exists so what happens here is we need to solve this so this wall need to be punched 
what happens here is so the machine here will send a packet to somewhere outside of the internet specifying its source port it says blah it will say hey send it and the fact that we sent something out through my router will punch a metaphorical hole in my router's wall because an entry will be created that says hey this machine this private machine and this is my udp port you send it out so now a record is created so anytime a udp packet received on the router we will look up this table because an entry exists we will send that packet to their, its destination so it's like all it is almost like punching a hole through the router right so what happens here is this is solved with with, with, with this with, with what we call a stun a session tri, a traversal of uh, i forgot the rest session traversal i'll put it in the screen stun of session traversal utilities of four nat something like that and what 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 you do is both of these private machines just talk to one public presence by the fact you're sending a udp packet to this public presence you just punched holes into your routers and now you can exchange this information exchange your source port for this machine exchange your source port for this machine and then transfer this knowledge to the to each other and now just that you know the public ip address you know the port you know the public IP address of this guy you know the port you guys can talk directly right because now this machine will send a packet to this destined to that port and because there is a hole that has been punched, there is a record that has been added in that, it will go right through that hole in the router to the destination machine. And then the sec same thing can happen on the other end. And I talked about all of that in my WebRTC course. Check it out here if you want to learn more. It's fascinating stuff indeed. But one thing we need, we need to learn here is this is UDP hole punching doesn't always work because you see when we punch that hole we punch that hole going to a specific public presence first right some routers implement certain NAT type that is too strict that's called symmetric NAT which means that yeah if you try to talk to this public IP as the stun server only that server can reply back to you right which is not what we talked about because yeah i talk to this public ip address and i open an, a port uh, but the other machine tried to talk to me some nat allows that but symmetric nat doesn't allow it symmetric nat means if you if someone you send a packet to a certain public ip address only that public ip address can talk to you and some routers enforce that in that case udp hole punching doesn't work in symmetric NAC configuration and that's where, where you need uh, something called the turn again i forgot the the actual naming for that and and the turn server is basically you use a centralized server to relay packets to each other instead of doing peer to peer like we talked about so why isn't there anything and it's called TCP hole punching. Why is it always UDP? Right? You will never see, or maybe almost very rarely see the or hear TCP hole punching. The reason is it doesn't make sense to do TCP hole punching. TCP is by design stateful, which means if I want to talk to a machine and i opened a tcp port only that 
process will ever make sense to talk to me not anyone yeah it is a hole per se but that hole is just designed for certain okay that sounds very dirty right now okay <laughs> that hole is designed for that person ew okay so the tcp hole punching because it's a stateful uh only the the counters are just designed for this certain processes to talk to each other that's it right because there's specific sequences there is a port there is window sizes all these parameters must exist on on both machines unlike udp udp is completely stateless you don't even need to reply in udp you can just do a one-way directional communication as long as you keep it alive obviously right and you send something from the other end such such that you keep that entry that record in the nat table alive but uh, most of the time it doesn't matter who talks to you because there's everything you need is in the udp packet there is no information stored in the process about a connection just like tcp that's why tcp hole punching doesn't make any sense because it's like yeah you're gonna punch a hole but only that process will need to co ever communicate to you it's like almost like symmetric net in a sense dcb hole punching right? so if i talk to google through port 443 only google can reply to that hole that i punched so to speak all right my brain is filled with holes right now okay guys that's enough for today. <laughs> See you in the next one. Goodbye.